demeanor and professionalism, the way he approaches the game is very impressive. No do-rag this weekend. No. Uh, but no sleeves as well. So halfway there yeah. for Ben Friedman. They'll be playing against Jesse Newbold. Jesse Newbold playing mono black aggro when we were in Providence too, was making the top eight. And Newbold off to a four and one start here. He'll be fast and furious with a gnarled scar hide. Is Friedman starting off with a beautiful? That could be very telling of a bad start. Or just nothing to do with double colored. But yeah, there is some possibility of him missing, maybe missing white mana. Newbold going with the white bordered land approach, mm -hmm. making our job easy and painful. As here comes an attack for two. Friedman going to play a Devour Flesh to get that gnarled Scarhide off the table. The follow-up play will be a Spiteful Return before passing the turn back. Also last weekend when we were in Portland, Gabe Carlton Barnes making the top eight with this deck before being dispatched by the champion Rob Hunsaker playing Nia Hexproof. This matchup, in my experience playing Mono Black Aggro, this is, Black White Midrange is about the worst matchup. Doesn't feel good. It's all spot removal into Blood Baron. Yeah. So that's really hard to beat when you're no. all black green. The, the one thing about Ben to keep in mind is that he is actually, you know, he's not playing any gray merchant anything, so he's not really this devotion base. And when at the Invitational, he wasn't playing Blood Baron then, and he's not playing Blood Baron again. He's got Obsidat instead. So he, always, in. he always opts to go without Blood Baron. Ramping into Obsidat is nearly as good. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's still tough to beat. Yeah. Obviously, as here's a Mogus and Marauder, it's going to give itself haste and get in the red zone here. It's two copies of Devour Flesh have really stymied Jesse. It's just hard to beat. You know, they, they can keep pace with you early on in the game, and their creatures are all brutal. Yeah. Here's a Lifebane Zombie. Going to show you three white-bordered lands, so Friedman's got to be thrilled about that. One thing I've always found about Mono Black Aggro is that it's, it's very, very important for this deck to draw a Mutavolt. Yes. Well, I, I think that you need to play four Muta Vaults, probably 22 or 23 lands, and basically every bestow creature available to give you the maximum hedging against flooding out. There is a Muta Vault, but this is a Desecration Demon here for Friedman. Newbold's going to draw a card for the turn, and he draws another copy of Muta Vault, so speak of the devil, and they shall appear. The issue that I had with, with Mono Black Aggro is that you need to play, you know, some number of removal spells because you have to answer creatures because they're all, every creature can at least block against you, which mm -hmm. is really potent. <laughs> And every removal spell in standard comes with certain liabilities. Either the two mana spells, whether it's Bio Blight, Doom Blade, Ultimate Price, those don't line up with everything. Hero's Downfall is three mana and double black, which you don't always have. So uh, if you don't have the right removal for the right threats here, certain cards like this are going to be really hard to beat. And of, the, of Jesse's eight removal spells, three of them are Bio Blights. He does have three Hero's Downfalls and two Ultimate Prices, which beat this demon, but not a lot of answers to this. Looks like we're going to fire up maybe a Mutavolt or two here. Newbold a little unsure if he wants to fire these up just yet. Three mana. Looks like it's going to be a copy of Mogus' Marauder. It can give itself haste. And now we'll fire up Mutavolt. And it's time to come into the red zone here for four. We'll see if Freeman does anything to do about that. Yeah, Jesse nearly animated the second Mutavolt. I think he felt be thought better of it playing around Bile Blight here. Mm -hmm. Mutavolt's going to attempt to trade. You see Friedman does have a Bile Blight. So going to get a bunch of stuff off the table. And Ben's card's actually in reserve. Or it looks like two cops of Underworld Connection, so he's doing quite well for himself. Ben's at 18 right now. <laughs> yeah, that's, I mean, a, that's a lot. That's a, that's a lot of that. Here he is, Underworld Connections. Desecration is going to come in for six. Newbold's going to go down to 10. And Friedman just going to pass the turn back. With the connections at the ready, Newbold does draw a copy of Thoughtseize. That's a little late to the party. And there is Underworld Connections that's going to go to the bin. Jesse going to fire up his Mutual. Going to come in here, put Ben down to 16. Let's make it 15 after a Connections activation. But I think uh, Ben Friedman's going to go on to win this game in just a moment. Yeah, he would have to get very unlucky to not be able to win from here. Going to activate Connections in the main phase. Friedman going to go down to 14. New card coming. Looks like a Life Main Zombie was picked up. Desecration Demon Trigger placed on the stack. Jesse may have some interest in sacrificing his Mutual to stop this. You see the swamp in his hand. And Newbull says, that's fine. I'll go down to two. Life Bane Zombie here for Friedman. Going to show the Swamp before passing the turn back over to Newbull. Who will take a draw. It's a copy of Heroes Downfall. And we will pack it in. So Ben Friedman's going to win game number one here over Jesse Newbull. Black-white midrange up a game over Mono Black Aggro. This matchup is, I, I can't say it enough. This is a, a really brutal matchup for Mono Black Aggro. And I think the bad thing here for Mono Black Aggro, and you have his deck list in front of you, is that there's not a lot of help in the sideboard either. Three copies of Doom Blade, not a lot of help to be <laughs> had there. Four Duress, two Deathrite Shaman, three Dark Betrayal, two Life Bane Zombie, and a Zathra Necromancer. I think you can bring in the Zathra Necromancer, the Dark Betrayals, uh, and the several, co some number of the Duress card copies. 
I don't think you can go all the way up to four duresses. There's just, it's just too hard to play that many reactive cards in the matchup. But a few of them could be well suited here. On Friedman's side, he's got two Duress, two Sin Collector, Whip of Erebos, two Bio Blight, two Doom Blade, an Ultimate Prize, the Banishing Light, Neural Connections, a Deicide, an Opus Deck Ghost Council to go along with his Tuna's main deck, and an Erebos, God of the Dead. Uh, gotta love the Deicide. There are a lot of enchantment creatures to kill, so that's gonna come in. I expect to see Ultimate Prize come in as well, as most of these creatures outside of Rakdos Cackler are just one color. And then two more Bile Blights, so you have a little bit more spot removal. You could board in Sync Collector if you'd like a body to try to block and take a removal spell with, even though I don't think the matchup is a ton about that. And then Banishing Light does a nice job of cleaning up maybe a Herald of Torment or yeah. Spiteful Return. All the removal spells are good in this matchup, and the, and the Deicide is good as well. It's a weird element of the Mono Black Aggro list that so many of the creatures are enchantment creatures that you can bring in enchantment removal. Golgari Charm is very powerful. The minus one, minus one mode is very good on Golgari Charm as well, but uh, also the fact that Cards like Herald of Torment are enchantments as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, the Deicide is a lot better against Mono Black Aggro than, say, Mono Red Aggro. Yeah. It's a pretty straightforward matchup here for Ben, all things considered. You just want to, uh, you just want to kill things and stay alive. Yeah, it's, That's it's, the goal. it's pretty easy, you know. Just always keep your head above water and make your land drops and play one of your large threats. It's very hard for Jesse to beat that recipe. Well, both players will finish sideboarding up here in just a moment. Game two, number two, excuse me, will be underway. But we will talk about where we're going to have not one, but two tournaments in the very near future. Baltimore is going to have a bunch, a bunch of opens here with our standard open, our legacy open, and soon to be our modern Premier IQ. It's going to be the debut, and we're going to have them every Sunday in the open series, starting in Baltimore, July 19th and 20th. Every Sunday, starting at 10 a.m., we're going to have a modern Premier IQ that's $5,000 in cash prizes, top four get invites to the invitationals, points for all participants, uh, side events prizes, the whole shebang. And we wanted to give some modern support to the Open Series without it interfering with Standard Legacy. So we have this finally set up for you in Baltimore starting 10 a.m. Uh, every Sunday. We're still going to be doing the Legacy Opens. They're still going to be the focus of our coverage. We're actually rolling them out a little bit earlier, starting at 9 a.m. rather than 10 a.m. as they historically have been, to try to get out of the tournament halls a little bit earlier. But th these Premier IQs are coming to the Open Series in Baltimore. And stores, you can also register for these the same way that you register for IQs right now. We have a couple of them already ready to go here. You see in Tampa, Tacoma, Knoxville, Denver, Roseville, Minnesota, more on the way. So you can apply for these IQs using the same resources you already do. Players, get a, uh, a hold of your store your tournament organizer, whatever, get these Premier IQs. We're very excited about them. On the store level, they don't have to be modern, but for all the Open Series events, they will be modern. Modern action coming, two weeks. Before I know it, I'm going to be in Baltimore. Yep. I already know it. I'm just going to wake up one day, take a flight, be looking at Camden Yards, go into the Noodles and Company in the Inner Harbor. It is really interesting to me that, you know, you have this opportunity, travel all around the country, yep. go to different uh -huh. cities, see landmarks, dining opportunities you don't get anywhere else. And the thing that's on your mind, going to Inner Harbor, Maryland, is the Noodles and Company. Well, first of all, I am who I am. And second of all, there are no Noodles and Company in Seattle, Washington. Okay. So what am I supposed to do? Sure, that's fair. It's like a tourist destination. It's like judging me for going to California and eating In-N-Out Burger. No, because I would say that In-N-Out Burger is more of a, regional, a known regional entity than Noodles and Company is. Like, when you say In-N-Out Burger, you know you got to be in California or Vegas, basically, to get that. Noodles and Company, that's all over the place. East Coast. Ish. And Indianapolis has them. That's Midwest, sure. Look, I don't have them, and I like them. Just saying, of the things to do in various locations. Wait, you want the... me to go eat crab cakes? Yeah. Well, maybe I will, because crab cakes are really good. They are really good. They are really and good, yeah. It's a Baltimore delicacy. They are quite good. You know, crab cakes are unreasonably expensive. I will say that. You've got to actually go into the water and pull the thing out. I mean, that's some labor. I don't think that making pasta is exactly easy. But you have to go into the water and pull out a living creature. That's just more effort. I feel like it's 2014 and we found a very easy way to do that with nets and things. It's not as hard as I think you're making it out to be. Have you ever tried to catch crabs? No. They are really, they're actually quite challenging. Are they feisty? <laughs> they are feisty. They can be a little... Uh, they, sometimes they don't go along with the process. Oh, see about that. Okay. I'll let you know how it goes when I try. Tormented Hero to start here for Newbold. Friedman going to play Temple of Silence. Take a look at the top card. Giving this a, a long thought before moving forward. So I guess he has a pretty solid curve in his hand here. 
a thrill kill for next turn. A card that that is a card that we did not see Gabe Carlson Barnes play last weekend. He played four copies of Painseer in his main deck. No thrill kills throughout a 75. I like a Painseer quite a bit. I'm a fan. I'm a fan. I like thrill kill a lot too, though. Depends on. I think it depends on the metagame that you're expecting. Yeah, it's definitely definitely thrill kill is nice against the carrioted coarser decks. Hard for them to block that. And there is the assassin. It will be unleashed. It's two three. So new ball to, with a pretty good start here. And there's a pack right in the way. Jesse will take a draw here. We'll see if Ben has any interest in blocking or if Newbold has a removal spell to even prevent that from being a thing. And it looks like Jesse does have a copy of Bile Blight in his hand. Looks like he may fire off discard spell to start. He does. So here's a thought seize. We'll take a look at Friedman's hand. Got a couple of lands over there in Temple of Silence and Goblet Shrine. And he has a Bile Blight, a Wreath of Bones. Looks like a Banishing Light and a Desecration Demon. Excuse me. This is one of the, the reasons that Thoughtseize is not nearly as powerful mono black aggro as it is in, say, mono black devotion. Because you're playing with a bunch of two ones, you care about every card your opponent has. It's mm -hmm. either a creature or a removal spell, something. Mono black devotion can ignore large portions of what the opponent is doing. And so Thoughtseize amplifies the fact that your opponent is already kind of mulliganing a little bit over the course of the game. Less so the case here. Like, what do you take out of this hand? I think in this situation, depending on, you know, if there are multiples over there in Newbold's hand, I would actually take Banishing Light because it's my belief that Friedman's turn, he's going to have to play something untapped. So I think you probably want to take the spell that costs the most because it'll kind of put him off curve of having to just, like, pay two, cast Banishing Light, and just leave a Mute Vault up so he's not as efficient. He's going to take care of the pack right and come across here for four. I think that he wants to just try to strand Ben without a way to do something proactive. He can try to fight off these removal spells with what he has left over, but the demon represents a unique challenge he might not be able to answer. Going to take two from the Godless Shrine. Now here's Banish Light to take care of the Thrill Kill Assassin. So again, Friedman does have a Bio Blight left. We'll see if Newbold's able to rebuild pretty quickly here. Looks like he drew a copy of Herald of Torment. I just feel like you can slog past the Desecration Demon in this situation, and I wouldn't want my opponent to have two removal spells if I was Jesse with that thought season a turn ago. It's all very close. I mean, that much, to be sure. Yeah. And the fact that he doesn't necessarily have a fourth mana on time makes the demon maybe a little less important. Life Bean Zombie is going to hit. Wah, wah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, Ben is not thrown. Actually, one of the things that makes Ben's deck nice is that he doesn't have, he only has two Obsidats in his main deck and the one in the sideboard. So Life Bean Zombie actually isn't the all-star that it is a lot of the time in this sort of matchup where the opponent has four Blood Barons and some number of ropes of that. Right. The, the chances of that card actually hitting are very low, and especially casting Life Bane Zombie after you thought season and see your opponent doesn't have a white creature. You're very fortunate there for Newbold. Yeah, Jesse doesn't really have a lot else going on there. He could have cast his Herald or his Gnarled's Car Hive, but I think he wants to uh, save those cards as a hedge in the event that he floods out. So I, I like playing the Life Bane Zombie that turn regardless, but he was definitely fortunate to get a little bit extra out of it. There's a Bio Blood to take care of the zombie, so two damage will come across here. Now Newbold, see a threat he wants to play. He could play two creatures this turn in Gnarled Scarhide and Spiteful Return. He could just play Herald Torment. Got a lot of options. Looks like he's going to go with the 3-3 three, three fly before passing the turn back over to Friedman, who will take a draw here. I like playing the Herald there because the other two creatures in Jesse's hand effectively have haste if he draws a fourth land, where the Herald does not. Three mana. This is a read the bones. Ben's going to go down to six to take a look. Probably not the best feeling in the world. Friedman looking at a hero's downfall in a mystery card. I don't have a great look at that from the scry. You feel like he almost has to block with Mutavolt this turn. Yeah, almost. And the other card in ben, Ben's card in his hand, the last one is Devour Flesh. So it is a removal spell to take care of the tormented hero. Now Ben's just going to pass the turn back. Newbold going to draw a card. It's not a land, so no bestows just yet. Ultimate price is actually what he found. You have to imagine the red zone is the place he's going to be in just a moment. So it does attack here for five. Of course, taking one for the Herald's Torment trigger on his turn. Friedman going to cast Devour Flesh. Yes. Tormented Hero going to go to the graveyard. Five damage going to come across here. Excuse me, three damage is going to come across. Friedman going to go down to five. I think if I'm Jesse here, I just empty out the reserves. Yeah, just drop them on. What's the worst that could happen? Uh, merciless eviction, but that is unlikely. That would really be something, though. 
I would really. But that is the worst thing that can happen. Th here. There is a worst thing that can happen. <laughs> you are correct. And the idiot brigade did get dropped, it, and Spike yep. turned into Nald Scarhide. Ultimate price in the chamber here for Newbold. The idiot brigade. There they are. A motley crew. Whatever it takes to clean it up. It's still not impossible for Ben to get out of this. He does have two removal spells that can target Harold and Spiteful returned. Mm -hmm. But he does have a mutable that can trade with the Scarhide. Looks like Ben has something here. Two mana. All right, there's a pack rat. That doesn't do it. I don't think that does it. This trigger on Harold on the stack. I guess, Ben's probably hoping that Jesse makes some sort of mistake here. But especially when, when Jesse has an ultimate price, it's not going to do it. Yeah, I'm fine just casting the ultimate price here. Just yeah, to me too. And Ben is going to pick up his permanence. So Jesse Newbold's going to win game number two here over Ben Friedman. We are tied up in mono black aggro versus black white mid range. That lifebane zombie was a really important piece there. I mean, the, the way the game was pacing there, Ben was definitely going to get to that Obsidat. So that Lifebane Zombie was really important. Yeah, and that Obsidat could have turned things around in a hurry. Oh, it's better than... <laughs> Obsidat's one of those cards where it's better than Jesse's deck on the table, yeah. almost. It's, it's just so big, swings the damage race so convincingly. Time to talk about our dual Open Series weekend that is happening September 27th and the 28th. We'll be in Jersey and Indy. Edison and Indianapolis is where we'll be, and you and Matthias will be taking care of things in Jersey. Yeah, we originally scheduled this as Indianapolis, but we had a second date here. We, you know, reconfigured the coverage team a little bit, yep. so Matthias and I will be in New Jersey covering that event. Indianapolis still happening as usual, and this is a first for Star City Games. Now, we run multiple events uh, during the Invitational weekends, but yep. that's all kind of in the same place. This is the first time we have two Open Series events in different parts of the United States. Pretty exciting stuff, and this goes well Maybe this becomes a more regular thing. This could lead to so much more. Maybe we'll end up having commentary competitions where we have two covered events. Oh, my goodness. Bring it on. Bring it on. Bring it on. I challenge anyone to a duel. You want a solo? Just me against you, heads up. Just one man in the booth. One man in the booth? Yeah, just doing play-by-play -play color commentary. That might be tough. That might be pretty difficult. But, you know, that would be fun. I'm just saying, uh, you know, it's, it's good to try things once. Just sure. test the water, see if, they, sure. you know, see if we can manage it. So just you in Jersey and there's me in Indy. Indy's my old stopping grounds anyway. That's a, that's a former home for me. Yeah, that's perfect. So we'll send you over to that garbage water hole that is Jersey, unless you get to work there. Nothing personal, of course. No, it's okay. No. I actually don't hate Jersey. I, mean, I like making fun of Jersey, but I don't hate Jersey. Yeah, that's not the way that everyone is about it. It's just kind of whatever. It's a weird thing. It's just a fun place to make fun of. Well, I think there's sort of this this dueling thing where people make fun of Jersey, which ratchets it up, ratchets up the residents' passion and intensity for Jersey, which yeah. ratchets up the mockery. It's sort of this this loop that beats itself. Well, here's the thing: the shore didn't really do didn't help you guys. You know, those people aren't from New Jersey. They had to get them from from New York and Rhode Island. I, I did know that. Okay, I did know that. But a lot of people don't know that, and so it did not help you guys at all. Right. And I'm really sorry about the situation and everybody else that did that to your great if they state. Ever did, if they ever had the Cleveland Shore or whatever, and they had to transport in a bunch of people from people that were places that were not Cleveland, you would say, this is ridiculous. But they would never do the Cleveland Shore. Yeah, well, people would be incinerated because yeah. the, the Cleveland Shore is on fire. That's correct. Still, right now. It wouldn't be safe to have the show. In 2014, we still can't put but it But if it was safe to have the show, still, the point is it would be annoying a thought sees here from Ben Freeman. We're going to take a look at the thought sees on Jesse's side, along with a hero's downfall, a tormented hero, a thrill kill assassin, spider for return, two lands. So, actually, a pretty good hand here. And actually, you know, we talked about for Jesse how it's difficult to thought sees Ben's deck. I actually think it's difficult for Ben to thought sees Jesse right now. Well, the only thing that you're really trying to do is break up a spot in the curve here. And Ben can't do that because Jesse has something to do on turn one, mm -hmm. has something to do on turn two, no matter what he, what he does here. So, taking a one drop's a little bit risky just because Jesse's so redundant in his deck with one drops as far as creatures are concerned. Didn't draw one that turn. And here's the thought sees from Newbold targeting Friedman. So Friedman has a Goblet Shrine, a Temple of Silence, and then some removal spells in two copies of Devour Flesh and a Bile Blight. And you can see why Ben took the Tormented Hero here, because he's going to kill 
whatever Jesse plays regardless. You'd rather get thought seized on turn one when his hand is really redundant. And this allows him an opportunity to cast the temple. If Jesse gets, or play the temple rather, without there being any pressure on him. Mm -hmm. If Jesse gets to play the tormented hero, then Ben either has to take two and kill it or play the uh, temple, neither of which are ideal. Temple's going to come in right now. Freeman's going to put that top card to the bottom before passing the turn back over to Newbold. And we know Newbold has a turn to play. What he found on his last turn was the land he's going to play right now in a Mutafault. And that's a big draw here. Along with the Throw Kill Assassin, that will be unleashed. Again, Newbold probably is assuming that this is going to die. And this will be the first of many creatures to die. Galatrang going to come in to play tap. There's Devour Flush to take care of the Throw Kill Assassin. So Newbold will gain a little bit of life before we do head back his way. Now, a real challenge here for Ben is he knows that there's a hero's downfall in Jesse's hand. So he can't just slam a demon on the table. Yep. He's going to have to answer, you know, threat for answer here the, the whole way through. Going to fire up a Muta Vault here, coming across for two. I'm not sure I love that play versus playing Spiteful Return and Deathrite Shaman and passing the turn back. I understand what he's trying to do with Spiteful Return, which is to get value out of it with Bestow. But I may want to just unload there. Maybe I'm wrong about that. Well, he's seen so much removal in Ben's hand that he's unlikely to be able to really do anything of significance with the Spiteful Return. I like taking that opportunity to get in a shot with Mutable. Okay. He's still advancing his board here, and he's not just curving into Ben's removal. When your opponent has so many removal spells in their hand, it's just important to get in your licks with Mutable when you get a shot. Freeman playing an Orzhov Gilgate for his turn and then passing the turn back over to Newble. Newble draws a card. Looks like it was a copy of Dark Betrayal. Of course, finding that balance of how much removal you're supposed to have at your sideboard is a very difficult thing to do. For sure. Because Newbold right now, again, has Hero's Downfall, has an ultimate price, has a Dark Betrayal, and then a Spiteful Return in his hand. So he's heavy on the removal, which is fine, but Ben Straw is mostly removal. So that removal that's in Jesse's hand is going to be there for a while. And yeah. Ben can probably overpower that eventually. Well, the thing is, Ben's build is much more poorly suited to overpower the removal or pace the game correctly because he doesn't have access to Blood Baron. Part of the problem with the mono black aggro deck in this matchup traditionally is you're sort of pressuring them, they're killing some stuff, you have some removal spells. But if they ever play Blood Baron, the game's over. You can't answer it, and you're usually not quick enough to beat it before it comes out. Ben doesn't have access to that card. He's going to have to beat uh, Jesse pretty honestly, either with Elspeth or just slogging through the removal spells, which is pretty tough to do. Hero's Downfall took care of Spiteful Return, then Friedman played a Temple of Silence for his fifth land, and a Scribe before passing turn back. Deathrite Shaman's going to remove something here, and in response to that, Devour Flesh will take care of the Deathrite Shaman. So now Newbold is without much of anything, even though he did draw a copy of Spiteful Return for the turn. So can play that, or could just take a shot in here with Mutable, but I think you have to continue to develop your board in this situation. It's, I think it's really rough for, for Jesse here to get tagged with a removal spell on the Mutable right now. Mm -hmm. Also, this opens up the play where potentially he gets a cast by full return, and maybe if Ben cooperates, gets to use the Dark Betrayal on something, which is really efficient. Well, he does have a target now, Dark Betrayal, finally. And there is a Pack Rat. Dark Betrayal, incredibly efficient removal spell going after the way for Friedman to actually win this game. And keep in mind, you know, Ben knows that that, that hero's downfall is still in hand. Mm -hmm. Devour Flesh is going to take care of the Spiteful Return. So Friedman's out of cards. He's at a relatively high life total here at 14. That was a really big draw there for Jesse. Drawing another copy of Mutable is huge. Big deal in this spot. Friedman going to have to take a draw here. Let's see what he finds. Again, creatures are no good. And even a card like Elspeth isn't great right now either. It can't cast it. I mean, this is a tough spot. Looks like Ben picked up a two mana spell, or at least bluffing one. It feels like maybe a pack rat was his draw. Haven't gotten a great look at the card, and it is a pack rat, so he's just going to play that and pass the turn back. Ultimate Price is going to get that off the table. Newbull is going to quickly untap, draws a swamp for the turn. Going to play that, fire up some Muta Vaults, come across here for four. Going to put Friedman down to eight. Friedman going to play a spell right away. It's a Life Bane Zombie, show you a hero's downfall that you knew about. So Newbull will draw. It's a copy of Rakdos Cackler. I think we're probably going to see downfall your Life Bane Zombie attack for two. I would rather attack with both Muta Vaults, cast Rakdos Cackler. Yeah. Because the thing is, it, it allows him to hedge a little bit against Bile Blight okay. by trading. And leaving the hero's downfall left over does answer some top decks that Ben has access to. So I probably would have... 
navigated that turn a little bit differently. There's an attack for four. Friedman's going to show a Gala Shrine and concede the game. So Jesse Newbold is going to win this match over Ben Friedman. Two games to one. Mono Black Aggro take it down over Black White Midrange. Traditionally a very tough matchup for Mono Black Aggro, but the absence of Blood Baron from Ben 75 means that he has to fight kind of fair in this matchup. The removal that Jesse ports into, uh, to know the Dark Betrayals and such, they're going to answer whatever. Desecration Demon, Obes of that. So Ben really needs to get to Elspeth in this matchup, and that's much harder to do than getting to Blood Baron. It looks like behind Jesse Newbold right now, a good friend of his looks to be Jason Ellis, I believe, who did top eight with Mono Black uh, Aggro the last time we were here. Mm -hmm. uh, around this area when we were in Providence a couple weeks back. So we do know that in this area of the country, there are players who do play Mono Black Aggro and very, are very successful with the archetype. Yeah, there's been a lot of noise about the deck in the Connecticut, Massachusetts, that kind of PTQ area. Mm -hmm. We've been hearing about it, in fact, before Journey to the Next even came out, mm -hmm. that there was a lot of this going on in the area. So not surprising to see more of it here. Congratulations, Jess, yet again, excuse me, to Jesse Newbold, moving on to 5-1 and one and basically knocking Ben Friedman out of the top eight. Yeah, this that is win. no longer in top eight contention. Yeah.